I thought for myself it would be best to be able to accommodate all asks in the best way possible. So I learned both. And what I landed on for my own personal experience is that uh, Adobe Animate was faster for roughing. In Photoshop, that's not the same. And it may be because I'm not using it correctly. Um, but my understanding of Photoshop is it's not, it's not made for design, right? So you run into some, or at least I do, some weird sort of layering things. And it's, it's not necessarily super easy to go from one keyframe to another. I'm using a plugin called Anamdesen in Anim Color. The reason I prefer Photoshop for cleaning is one, you can draw a uh, way, it's, it's way better for drawing itself. Yeah. And so you can, you can accommodate um, like a vast range of styles and art directions that you're either handed from somebody, another designer, or that you designed yourself, right? Like this gritty texture, for example, right? And this is just some spray brush. Um, I can't recreate this in anime, or at least I don't know how to do that. Maybe you can, but <laughs> I don't know how to recreate this in animate. So if I, if this is an ask from the client, I'm either doing it in animate and then I'm recomping all this stuff in after effects, which yeah. is doable. And I think pretty common or I'm, or I'm figuring out how to do it and sort of draw it every frame of Photoshop. And for me, depending on how complicated it is, Photoshop is the go-to for that. I just put in the, the rough MP4. Um, and then this is just on 17 transparency, right? I'll just dim that and then sort of follow that. Um, you run so, an X, you run an MP4 out of animate. That's what That's you right. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, and GIF works too. I think it just might be a little funkier in your timeline. I yeah. just prefer MP4 because it's quick and easy. Yeah. So I'll drop that in. Usually I put it over sort of what I'm drawing so that I don't lose any of the detail. So mm -hmm. for example, if I had put it under, so over I can draw and I can still kind of see the defined details of the actual piece. Mm -hmm. If I have this over, then I lose that. And I'm sort of just guessing at that point. It does get a little bit difficult because it's like, okay, what am I really looking at? I kind of got to be really focused in order to see what I'm even drawing. Yeah. But over time, you get more and more used to that. It's super important to stay on design. And in this instance, it isn't because I just drew it and it was like pretty quick or whatever. Um, so I could have probably had more freedom there. But I, I think I've just gotten so used to that being like a typical client necessity is like, please don't ruin our designs. Like we spent a lot of hard work on these things. So it, it's, it's sad to see them get ruined in animation. I just got through all of the, whatever the leaf and the water. And, and then once I understood that it looped at least partially, so you'll notice Steve's was a few frames short based on my original thing. And for whatever reason, I'm not sure why that ended up, but I just, it's like just push through anyway. And then we'll handle that in comping, which is what we ended up doing. So from there, I rendered out and I rendered out, I think just MOVs or whatever. Um, you can also do, I've learned since this actually, you can import PSDs themselves. I'm sure, again, you guys probably know all this, but you can import it as footage and then have those play. And I, I prefer that now because you can make uh, okay. edits to those live PSDs and those will change in the file itself. So mm. you sort of avoid like going back and forth if there's a mistake, which, which is, I don't know, in my opinion, that's better. But, um, so if we wanted to dig in maybe to the file, I don't want to go too heavy into this because again, Steve did this, not me. Um, it's basically just, go ahead, Michael, did you have something? No, I was going to say, yeah, at this point, it's like a pretty straightforward comp considering okay, if, you've cool. got, if you've got Steve Savali's compositing skills, that this is a quick, <laughs> that's a quick totally. assignment. Steve uh, took these, turned it around in two minutes, and he's like, here you go, man, and we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, how, how long do you guys think you worked on this? How many, like over, over how many weeks? I'm sure you guys were doing other stuff as well, or were yeah. you doing it all in a single window? No, we were doing other things, but I think we were being pretty conscious of keeping the jive going. Mm. So, I don't know, the, keeping the motivation alive. So, we were I think we were both pretty psyched on doing something for fun you can kind of get into like a client groove if you have too much of it and not enough personal stuff so to yeah. answer your question i think i think it was about a week i don't know steve may okay. prove me wrong here but yeah, from yeah. what i remember yeah it was about a week uh, um, so so in the final you guys have some sound design did you guys have yes. somebody do that or did you do it yourself no i don't dabble in sound design mm, i don't okay. think steve does either but i sent it to a friend let me tag him as well while we're at it um QB sound. Mm. 
Um, they're overseas. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to get to their uh, site. So let's here. see, we've got about another 10 minutes. If anybody hanging out has any questions, go ahead and throw that into the chat now. QB sound. So let's see, Jay says, um, in a client scenario, how much time would you tell a client it would take for you to do this quality of work for, say, a 30-second animated video? It's a good question, Jay. Uh, this quality uh, with Cell and C4D, I can't answer for C4D, but for Cell, if it was 30 seconds, I'd ask for a month, ideally. If I was doing it all myself or if I had other people on, I'd probably ask for a month and then from, go from there. Let's see, did you know it was going to be real worthy as you were working on it? Thank you for the question, Trey. This is in my reel and I think it's in Steve's as well. Nice. I think that's sort of the intention, yeah, mm. is to like, when you're doing something for fun, make it as cool as you possibly can because you don't necessarily get those opportunities when you're being paid all the time. And also, sometimes you do get those opportunities and then you can't post them. There's like NDAs or there's whatever client restrictions, et cetera. So, yeah, I think if you can utilize that, uh, those chances to make something cool, then you definitely should. Uh, Steve says, what do you wish you would have spent more time learning in the beginning of your career? Not necessarily skills. I would say uh, like work-life balance. That's still something I'm super bad at. Mm. I don't know if that answers this question, but... That's probably something I would be more conscious of. <laughs> Just how to be better as a person. Uh, yeah, exactly. So Jay says, uh, with a growing interest in animation, I'd love to get your general thoughts on animation's role in society, either today or going into the future. Thank you for the question, Jay. I think it plays a very important role. I don't know. I mean, does that answer the question? <laughs> Not really. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, people love animation. Um, we are constantly watching animated content in my house. I have young children, but even before right I had on. young children, it's like I wanted to see every Pixar and Disney and there's just like a strange magic to animation that I feel like people are interested in. And, you know, ev of everything MoGraph Mentor does, like people seem particularly drawn to 2D animation, to Adobe Animate, to the stuff we've done with Enrique. Um, animation is magical too like frame by frame it's so magical the experience of doing it and watching it play back and um and getting to create it you know it's interesting we do a um in class three the project is called animation for a cause where people try to use their skills with design and animation to create something that gives the message of a nonprofit or some kind of issue like climate change um i am I'm skeptical that like any single piece of animation can just like rock the world and bring positive change washing over the masses and like solving huge problems. Um, but it's kind of the like thousand points of light. Like if you're out there and you're an animator and you can make a positive impact with your skill set, and we're all doing that and we all have that mindset, um, then maybe, maybe through attrition and, and putting all that stuff out there really collectively all of our work really can make a positive impact and if we're volunteering our skills to to worthy causes or to confront what we see as like first order problems that need that need solving in the world and we'll get in one more question peter says which studio is your favorite my favorite client is odd fellows because i work with them a lot and they're close yeah uh, my favorite Super studio good. right now i think is moth just, mm. i don't know i'm just drawn to their style currently and one of my other favorites is gunner um mm. I don't know, something about them that's like just really connects with how I like to do art. <laughs> Thank you for the question, Peter. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out wherever you are. Uh, have a great Tuesday. We are going to post.